Hey everybody, welcome back to Environmental Science Analysis with Dr. Lisa. Today we're going to look at uh, how you could uh, download and work with some data from the internet. And I've decided to download some data from uh, waterqualitydata.us, which is the portal for the EPA's uh, sort of a compilation of all the data that the EPA has ever collected. Uh, and, and many of the states and stuff too send their data to this uh, portal. And of course, there's a million ways to search in this portal. You can do it by country. Of course, most of this data is going to be in the United States. Uh, you could do it by state, by county within the state. You could do it within latitude and longitude. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm going to do a real simple uh, search here. I'm going to search for a specific characteristic. I'm going to search for perfluoro compounds because um, this is a topic of huge interest right now. Uh, and let's say maybe I want to look for them in uh, biological tissue. So I, I find it's better to not have too many uh, constraints on your search at first and then to narrow down from there. So let's just take a look at this. We can go down here. Here's my interactive map. Uh, we can go down here and we can say show sites on the map. And it says, your query returned no data to download. So that's kind of sad. That means we need to go up here and maybe make our search criterion even more broad. So I'll get rid of the biological tissue part and just see where they have any perfluoro compounds of any type. Show sites on the map, and it says your query, query will return over 4,000 sites. None of the bio biology data, no fr nothing from NWIS, nothing from stewards, but a bunch of stuff from Storet, which is uh, the, the EPA's old uh, water quality portal that's been kind of discontinued now. And there's the sites on the map. I have to maybe screen, scroll around a little bit. Uh, you can see a whole lot of sites in Minnesota because Minnesota has a big PFAS problem because that's where 3M, uh, which is the corporation that made a lot of PFAS, has a lot of manufacturing facilities. So lots of sites in Minnesota uh, and it really all over the United States. And so then I say, hey, wait, this is awesome. Uh, I could also style the sites by source, site type, activity. Um, but I'm going to scroll down. Oh, see, it's, I'm, I'm scrolling on the map when I really want to scroll down. Okay, so here I can choose how I want to export the data. Uh, right, the, the default is to give you only the site data, uh, which generally is not that helpful. What I really want is my sample results. So maybe I'll say I, I have physical and chemical data here, so maybe I'll choose this one right here. And right now it's set, the default is comma separated values, which is fine for me. So I'm going to hit download. And it tells me 49,000 sample results from over 4,000 sites. And that's okay. Uh, that, that's a reasonable size. If it was over like 100,000, I might worry a little bit. But I'm just going to hit continue here. And then I'm going to say, sure, open it with the Windows Explorer. And if I go up here, I can see that it's going to take a little time. Oh, that actually opened very quickly. So then I can open this file, um, and it shows up here in my Explorer as a as a comma separated value file called result. So if I double click on that, it'll open up in Excel because that's the default in my on my computer. Comma separated value files will open in Excel. Takes a little time, longer than it should, but it'll get there. 17%. Go Excel, go! You can do it! So what I'm going to get here, again, I, I've searched for basically all of the perfluoro compound data that the EPA has in their water quality portal. Um, and it's going to be a mix of a lot of different things, okay? So here you can see, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap text on this first line so you can see the headers better. The organization, MNPCA, is the Minnesota Pollution Control Authority. And you can see it's even written out here, Pollution Control Agency, um, it's Activity Identifier, it's a long complicated number here, but it tells you what kind of sample, it's a routine sample, it's a sample of water, specifically groundwater, uh, started on October 2nd of 2006 at 1026 a.m. Central Standard Time. And then there's a bunch of stuff in here that is largely empty. Um, sometimes it's filled in, you can see a few places, but not always. And so this is one of the first things you learn about data from the EPA's water quality portal, uh, is that very frequently it's, you know, it's entered into this by a lot of different people. So here this, this is the Palermo well field, um, Geoengineers Incorporated are the people who collected this data. Here's Portland Harbor, this is the Portland Harbor Superfund site, which I'm very, very familiar with. 
Um, so that's uh, EPA Region 10, Superfund, Portland Harbor. This is EPA Region 10, Boom Snub Superfund site. Um, here's something from Arizona, more stuff from Minnesota. So the point is that many different agencies have, have collected data that's all ended up in this database. And they all have sort of different conventions about how they input their data. So some of these fields are not going to get used, even though maybe they should have been used. They're not going to get used. Um, and then there'll be some extra sample, ex extra information over here. So like this is under column W, right, which is says activity comment. And so the comment could be quite long, sample name, sample ID, a um, bunch of other stuff going on here. Uh, here and of course we can also do our favorite thing here where we uh, we can view freeze panes so that we can always see the top even though we scroll downward um, facility names all kinds of stuff here so how, how the sample was collected the equipment used the then it says result detection condition and you can see sometimes it says not detected but sometimes it doesn't say anything uh, and sometimes, usually when it says not detected, there will be nothing over here in the column that says result measured value. Uh, but sometimes there is nothing under result measured value, but it, there is not anything here uh, that says not detected. That's not a good example, but so here, here we go. So here's a, a result, and here it does not say not detect. It does say present below detection limit. Uh, so two different ways of saying the same thing, right? Present below de quantitation limit or not detected. Um, so different ways of saying different things. But you notice uh, the non-detect here under the result file, the result uh, column, gives you just a blank cell. So you have to kind of keep that in mind and know that that's how this works. Uh, and I believe that there's some data in here where you will not have a not detect over here even though you don't have a number. Um, not seeing any of those right now, but I think that that's true. So here's your actual result measured value with its units. Uh, here's a measurement qualification code, J and U. U usually means non-detect, usually, uh, except that here there's a number given. So I don't know what that means. It's not listed as a non-detect. So I think that's an example of things that might be non-detect, even though it doesn't say that in the result detection condition text column. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff here. You know, is it on a dry or a wet weight basis here? You can see sometimes it's wet, sometimes it's dry. Uh, sometimes you have a precision, although I don't, I'm not seeing any precision numbers here. Here's a precision. So a few of them do have precision. Um, and then there's some more comments here, lab sample. Original qualifier, qualifier U, not detected value shown. <laughs> thanks. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, so it is sort of telling us that it's not detected. Um, lab remarks, sample fraction originally reported is not applicable, assumed to be total. That's good to know. So again, the, the take home message is that many people putting a lot of data into this database using different conventions for how they report non-detects and things like that. Uh, and then here's another really important thing to keep note of. Here's the detection limit, detect quantitation limit measure slash measured value. Uh, and here's the measure unit code. So basically this is the de detection limit and you can see sometimes there is a detection limit given and sometimes there is not. If you happen to need to know your detection limits, you might be out of luck, uh, which frequently happens to me. I know I frequently need to know my detection limits, but they're not given. So this is just an example of some of the things that you might find if you d download data from Storet. Uh, this data's got, you know, it's got issues. Uh, and so in our next little video, we're going to talk about how you take this data, this comma separated value file, and import it into Microsoft Access. And then you can do some fun stuff with it and uh, start to query it and, and make more sense of it.